Hi again, everybody. Chris Tisdale here. Thank you for joining me. In this presentation, I'm going to continue my series of videos on geometry and geometric construction using a circle arc template and a straight edge. Now you can see the circle arc template in the background. That's a naked version. Um, today I'll be using one with, with markings on it as part of a bigger tool. But the motivation behind this circle arc template is that it's easier to use, it's safer, and it's more accurate in, in the drawings. So I'm going to um, share with you um, a basic geometric construction, one that's thousands of years old, and you would see it in, in Euclid's elements and also at high school. So let me share my um, screen with you and um, you can have a look at this tool. So this is the particular shape that we're going to be interested in. This helps us draw arcs of a circle. It's got a positionable center point and we've also got a straight edge close to it. So you can draw arcs and um, lines and you can intersect those two things to get points. Now, this is part of a larger um, um, tool called a Mathemat, okay? Um, and there are lots of interesting shapes on, on this one, but these are the two that we're going to be using today. Okay, so which construction are we going to do today? Well, I'm glad you asked. One of the really interesting things about today's presentation is, because, is we're using some basic constructions from earlier videos to solve a more complicated problem. So let me start off with the, the basic, um, actually, let me get a new piece of paper because I can see a marking on that. So there, all right. So let me just start with something. Suppose I've got a given line segment, okay? And it's got um, endpoints A and B. All right, and suppose that we um, want to have another point, C, and what we want to do from CB, we want to cut off a line segment that's equal in length to AC, all right? So we want to find a new point sort of over here, such that the distance from C to this new point is the same as the distance from C to the endpoint A. Okay, now, like I said before, this problem is literally thousands of years old. Okay, um, and we're only allowed to use the circle arc and the straight edge to solve it. Okay, so it's going to rely on two things. The first is dropping a perpendicular to that point C. So we talked about that in an earlier video. And the second part is constructing a bunch of equilateral triangles, okay? And I talked about that in a different um, video as well. So what we're doing, we're really synthesizing, we're bringing those ideas together. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is, or actually, before we do that, let's, let's actually write down what we're, what we're trying to do. So given... AC. Construct a new point. Let's say, I'll call it just Z. Such that. Um, the length of AC equals the length of CZ. Okay, that's kind of what we're doing if I was to summarize it. Okay, all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is drop a perpendicular uh, ray or line segment to the point C. All right, so how do we do that? Well, you might remember that we place the center of our circle arc template at C. And we draw something a bit bigger than a semicircle. 
so that it intersects with the line segment AB. So we've got two new points there. Let's say, um, I don't know, let's call them D and E. Okay. Now, in order to get this perpendicular line, we're going to set up a equilateral triangle with base, say, DC and CE. So let's place the center of our circle arc template at D, and I'm going to make a small arc here. So I get a new point, say, um, F up there. And I can do the same with the point E, right? I'm going to place the center of my circle arc template at E, and I'm going to get a little point there. Let's call that G. All right, I have a point there and a point there. I'm going to construct a line or a ray, um, joining them and extending it. Same with E and G, a ray and extending it, or a line segment and extending it. So let me move over to, I'll do brown for this one. So let me go up here. So let me extend that. I don't have to go too far. What I'm hoping is that these two lines will cross and then I'll drop this perpendicular down. Okay. So let's get that second line going, or the second ray. And you can see we've got this new point, let's call it um, H. All right. And what I can do is drop that down to there and actually extend it. All right, so that's basically the first part of, of the problem. So let's extend that up there. All right, so what I'm going to do now, this um, green ray, um, it, it's a perpendicular um, a ray to this AB. And we've also got these two sides the same length. Okay, what we're going to do now is form a bigger equilateral triangle. So D, E, H is an equilateral triangle, but what we want is a bigger triangle, A, some point up here and some point Z down here. All right, so you can do that a couple of ways. You can either um, construct a, a line that's parallel to this side through the point A, that's fine, and you'll, and you'll go up there, and then you get another point up here, and then you, construct another line through this point that's parallel to say HE and it'll come down there. That's fine. I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to just construct another equilateral triangle here and extend one of the sides and then do the same thing up here. So it's slightly different, but the um, result should be the same. Okay, so um, let's, let's do that again. What I can do here is draw my little semicircle. I, if I wanted to, I could extend the, the line AB, but I'm not going to do that. So I get a new point, um, say I, and then put the center of my circle arc template at I and then draw a little arc up there. All right, so that could be called J, let's say. All right, so I've got the point A, I've got the point J, let's use the straight edge to um, form a line and actually extend that so that it meets this ray here. There, okay. So we've got a new point up here now. Let's, um, let's call that K. Now also this, this line AK will actually be parallel to the line D, DH, line segment DH, all right? But I've just used a slightly different construction to do that. 
All right. So um, what I can do now is do the same thing just up here. So again, using an equilateral triangle. Um, let's use, uh, I'm running out of colors here. I'll, I'll try brown again. All right. So I'm going to place the circle arc template with the center at K. And I'm going to draw an arc, a semicircle. I get a new point over here. Say L. And then I'm going to move the center point over to L and I'll get a crossing over here. Okay, let's call that um, M. All right, almost done now. So the very, very last construction is going to form the ray or the line segment, extended line segment KM. And lo and behold, we get an intersection point down here. That's going to be our Z. And you can see, well, KZ is actually parallel to HE. All right. So the line segment of interest is CZ, and that's claimed to be equal to CA. All right. Well, let's measure it. Let's find out. Let's actually test it. Now, you're not allowed to measure in geometry, but look at that. This distance is 40 millimeters and this distance is 40 millimeters. So pretty exact. I would be surprised if you could get that exactness by using a traditional compass, okay? So how would we justify, how would we justify um, that this construction actually really is the um, construction that we're looking for because we're not allowed to measure, right? So one way, is to use similar triangles, right? So the justification that, that I would probably do here is to say, right, this triangle, say AJI, it's an equilateral triangle because all the sides are radii of the same size circle. That triangle is similar to the big triangle AKZ, right? So if I was proving this, I would say, Note, triangle AJI is similar to the big triangle AKZ. So what does that mean? It means there's a relationship between their ratios and basically that side, that side, and that side are the same length, okay? So we know that AJI is equilateral because the sides are all made up of radii which have the same length. All right, so the big triangle's got to be equilateral. So that side, that side, and that side have all got to be the same length. Okay, well, how does that show that this length equals this length? Well, um, uh, you can do that a couple of ways, but one way is to say, right, this green ray goes through the apex and it's perpendicular to the base. Therefore, it has to cut the base in, in half, right? Needs to it perpendicularly bisects the base. Perpendicularly bisects the base of triangle AKZ. So, AC. 
equals CZ, those two lengths must be equal. All right, now there's a lot going on there and I haven't fully and carefully justified the, the um, construction, but the, the idea between this was just to show you how you can bring the various moves together to actually get something that's, that's pretty interesting just using a circle arc template and a straight edge, okay? So um, this is one of my favorites. I like it because lots of things come together and you're really using equilateral triangles almost everywhere, right? Even in dropping this, perp this original perpendicular green ray, you're using equilateral triangles to, um, to do that. All right, so a bit longer than my usual presentations on this, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, let me know what you think. If you've had any stories about using compasses, um, feel free to share them. I would, again, be surprised if you can get this kind of accuracy and ease of use with a compass, but let me know. Uh, all right, folks, thanks for joining me. I will see you again soon. Bye.